The entire New Testament lays claim that Jesus was crucified to death as a ransom and atonement for our sins. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, detail Jesus' ministry, death, and resurrection. And this fact is supported by other authors in the Bible, like Paul, Peter, the author of Acts, and the author of Hebrews, who's probably Paul. The New Testament is using the Old Testament as proof for the crucifixion um, through messianic prophecies, such as Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53. The crucifixion typology is also seen in the Garden of Eden through the covering of Adam and Eve with animal skins provided to them by God himself. We see the incredible parallels between the prophecy of Abraham when Isaac asks him, Father, where is the sacrifice? To which Abraham replies, God will provide the sacrifice, my son. The order of God to Abraham was for him to sacrifice his son. His only son is the way that God says it. Other key parallel passages are found with Moses when he lifts up the serpent on the pole. And anyone who looks upon the serpent on the pole uh, and believe that they could be healed were healed. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 makes the statement very clear and it says life is in the blood and it has been given as an atonement to you uh, for your sins. The final plague of Moses against Egypt is known as the Passover, which required all the Israelites to sacrifice a perfect and spotless lamb so that their firstborn sons would not be killed by the angel of death. Jesus is identified as the Lamb of God sent to take away the sins of the world by John the Baptist right before Jesus was baptized, which parallels um, the Passover lamb. Jesus claims that the Son of Man must be lifted up on a pole like the serpent Moses lifted up in the wilderness. And he, Jesus, the Son of Man, was sent to take away the sins of the world for all who look upon him and believe. When Jesus is with his disciples on the night of his betrayal, he commands them to take the bread, which is his body, and to drink the wine, which is his blood. And this indicates that they are now a part of the new covenant. Jesus also says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And we know that life is in the blood. And we know that Jesus came to give life and give life everlasting. We also know that Abraham promised Isaac that God would provide the sacrifice, which God did provide in the form of a ram and then ultimately fulfilled through Jesus. We know that Adam and Eve attempted to cover their own guilt and shame by using fig leaves and God rejected their own efforts and provided them with coverings of his own, the coverings of animal skins. When Jesus said on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He isn't complaining about his circumstances. He is quoting the opening verse to Psalm 22, uh, which says things like, they have pierced my hands and my feet, which describes the crucifixion. We also read in Psalm 22 that onlookers will mock the one who is pierced and cast lots for his garments, which is exactly described in the crucifixion accounts by the gospel writers. Isaiah 53 says the Messiah will be crushed for our iniquities, pierced for our transgressions, and by his stripes we will be healed, which is a prophecy of the lashings, which are the stripes Jesus received before his execution by crucifixion. From Genesis through Revelation, we read about mankind's condition, and our condition is sinful, rebellious, and we are in a desperate need for a savior. And God says himself that he is the only savior well my brothers and sisters jesus is our only savior as the bible says and the bible also says that only god can be our savior